The Financials tab of an account is where you can add prejudgment and post-judgment claims, add account level interest settings, adjust account level allocation and disbursement settings, add new transaction descriptions, post payments, post costs and fees, and add adjustments. On the top right hand corner, you will see a set of sub-tabs for the financial screen as well. These break down the entire section into four separate screens. Transactions. This is the overview page and where you add, edit, or delete transactions such as payments, costs, and fees. This is also where you process adjustments and print a statement of account or receipt for a debtor. The transactions summary is at the top of the transactions tab. This always defaults to today's date. Changing it and clicking Recalculate will alter the numbers shown in the pre- and post-judgment overview columns as if it were currently that date. You will also see a brief summary of information from the Claim Details page including debtor name, client name, account number, and so on. One popular field listed here is the current per diem which can change dynamically depending on how the interest has been set to accumulate on the account and how large the balance is each day. It is based on the interest rate settings on either the pre-judgment claims subtab, if only a pre-judgment claim exists, or on the settings slash judgment subtab, if a post-judgment claim exists. The overview columns in the account summary show a breakdown of the total interest, amount, pre- or post-judgment claims, costs, fees, and payments, along with the total balance due. By default, an account with only a pre-judgment claim amount will show the single column in the account summary section. If you add a judgment amount to the account, a second column will appear. New transactions posted on or after this judgment date will only apply to the right-hand column. Clicking on the See Current Allocation Balances button will also display the remaining amounts left to be paid to each allocation – principal, interest, costs, attorney's fees, etc. Right above the Account Summary columns is also a link called Print Statement of Account, which pops up with a receipt-style page that can be printed or exported for the debtor. The Add New Transaction section is where you can enter payments, costs, and fees to the account. The fields here include the following. Date, which is required. The date of the transaction. It is important to note that the date entered for a transaction must be on or after the date of the claim, whether pre- or post-judgment, for it to calculate properly. Description. Required. This is the type of transaction you'd like to apply to the account. It can be a payment to reduce the balance, or a cost or fee to increase it. Amount, which is required. The amount that you'd like to set for the transaction. Note, which is optional. A field for other important information about the transaction. Collector, which is optional. The collector assigned to a payment type transaction receives credit for it on certain reports. This will default to the collector assigned to the account on the Claim Details page if one exists. Co-collector, which is optional. The co-collector assigned to a payment type transaction splits credit evenly with the collector, 50-50, and their earnings are shown on certain reports. Co-co-collector, which is optional. The co-co-collector assigned to a payment type transaction splits credit evenly with the collector and co-collector, one-third each and their earnings are shown on certain reports. Watch while I demonstrate how to insert a transaction. Once the necessary fields are filled out, you click the Insert Transaction button to post it to the account. Depending on what information you chose, or what is enabled on your Simplicity Collect account, you may be required to address additional information in certain pop-up windows before the transaction can post. Once a transaction has been posted, you have several options. 
you can override payment allocations, edit the transaction, void the transaction, or delete the transaction. Please note that if you are using a payment processor, editing, deleting, voiding, or marking a payment NSF in simplicity will not refund money to the debtor. If you need to process a refund, you must go through your merchant or payment processor. To apply an adjustment, click on the Add Adjustment button. From the box that opens, select whether you would like to make an adjustment that adds or subtracts the amount specified. Enter the amount of the adjustment that you would like to apply. Choose which category the adjustment is being made to, whether principal, interest, cost, or attorney fee. Optionally, you can adjust the date or add a note, respectively. Click on Submit to complete the process. One option that will not be available until there are transactions posted is Financial Column Visibility. Clicking the gear icon to the left of the Date Column header opens up an Options menu that allows you to choose which columns are displayed within the Financial Transactions screen. Please note that some of these fields may be restricted from viewing and or editing for anyone other than system administrators. Mm -hmm.